Okay, so I originally um, did this before, but the sound didn't record, so I'm just going to do a screenshot of the one I already made and try and dub over and remember what I said, so I apologize if I mess anything up um, or it's kind of off. So I'm going to start the recording. Now on this image, you can see that um, the logos do look more visible on the darker areas. Um, so that's always an option is to move the logo to a spot where there's more contrast so that they, they can be seen. Um, but some other, I have other ways to solve this problem. Um, so what I would do is um, load the brush with your logo. So it should be in the folder that I sent you. Um, make it the size that you want it to be and the size that's similar to the one you have is about 412 pi pixels and um, then I would create a new layer for it to be on so it can be easily moved around and usually what I do is select a color from the image to use so that it blends in well with, with the image and um, I'm going to use color from her hair and then what I do is I just click once and then I keep clicking until it gets dark enough that I feel I can read the words. Um, if you move it around and you can't find the right spot again, you can just always copy the layer and that will also make it darker. And you can just keep doing that over and over until you get to the right um, that density that you like. And the next thing that you can also do using the colored ping file is I'm going to drag it over and just make it smaller. And then I would, oops, okay, I would do the same thing that I kind of just did. I would just copy the layer that that is on. So make a new layer and I would do that a couple times until I felt like it was dark enough to be seen. Now of course it's going to matter where you place it if the coloring of the background is similar to the coloring of the words like this pole right here. Um, you know you're not ever going to see those letters because it's so similar in color. So if you're going to move it you can select all or link the layers or merge the layers together so that they all move together. And I would just find a, a spot with the most contrast to put the logo so that it can be seen. Um, so yeah. Okay. So you see how it gets darker? Another thing that you can do that doesn't change the coloring of the original watercolor aspects is to copy the layer just like you did before but do a color overlay so double click color overlay and then choose a darker gray color than the the original lettering had and click OK and then do a layer mask and mask off the select a round soft brush and then I would just mask, mask off with the black brush the watercolor details and that would leave the wording you know the darker gray so let me just zoom in here so we can take a better look and make my brush smaller so it can fit in still kind of big so let me make it smaller and um, you know that basically preserves the coloring of the original while allowing you to darken just the lettering of the words. Um, again if you want to move these two layers around um, you'll want to make sure that they're both selected or that they're linked together and you can do that by right clicking and going to 
link layers, or um, you could just merge layers as well, which you can do by right clicking. And merge layers, and then that becomes one layer that you can easily move around. And you can see the original versus the new one where the lettering is darker and easier to read. Um, alternately, one other solution would be to open up the high res ping file that I sent you, copy the background, and just do those steps over again. But this time, um, you know, on the larger file, so do color overlay, change it to a darker gray, and then mask off the, that's too small. So find a right size brush and mask off the, the gray off the colored parts. And that will leave you with just the darker lettering. And if you want to keep the photography the same color as well, you mask that off. And then I would merge the two layers and save this as a new colored pane or darker, just save as, um, so you can d distinguish between the two or just save it if, if you like that better. And then that way you don't have to keep going through the steps of masking every time you want to put it on an image. So again, you know, the placement of the logo is important and you want people to be able to read it and see it. So I would, I would tend, I tend to put my logos where, or my watermark where it can be easily read. So that's it. And hopefully that helps. If you have any further questions, just let me know.